the Reds need to build a winning streak like right now. And it starts in Detroit. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds with myself, Jeff Carr. I am a lifelong Cincinnati Reds fan, and I've turned an addiction to this team into information for you. This is going on my fifth season, podcasting every day about your Cincinnati Reds. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for taking time out of your day to listen to me talk some Reds with you. I encourage you, if you're listening, hit me up on Twitter at Jeff Carr with three Fs. Or if you're watching right here on YouTube, please jump down into the comments section and give me a thought. Give me a... a belief that you have about this Cincinnati Reds team in their final 17 games of the season, or let me know you're an everyday or always appreciate hearing from our everydayers, whether it be in the chat, whether it be at the game, you know, wherever, if you happen to see me out getting a haircut or something, I, I don't know. Get, give me a shout out. Let me know. Always love getting a chance to talk Reds with you because it's what I do. And I love doing it every single day. And on today's show, I want to talk about this Tiger series, the opportunity that the Reds have. Now, there is a big challenge with it. There's a huge challenge to the pitching staff that we'll get into in here in just a moment. But also what the Reds need to do overall as a lineup moving forward for these final 17 games is going to be put to the test by this Tigers pitching staff. And we'll look at what the Reds need to do for these final 17 games of the season. That's all coming up on today's episode that is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app and create an account and use the promo code LOCKEDONMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And where we're going to start today, the Reds have 17 games left and they've got to start a run like right now. We're done with the 500 ball. We're done with treading water. And yes, there were a lot of circumstances, whether it be roster wise, whether it be injuries, COVID, whatever it was, they treaded water well through that. They did not sink. They did not lose their ability to make the playoffs. They're only a game and a half out. And actually, uh, as I'm, I'm recording this, the, uh, the diamondbacks and Mets were playing and, um, just hoping for the Mets to win that series against the Diamondbacks. But as the Reds look at the other teams ahead of them in the standings, it's time to go on a run now. There's no more treading water, and it starts with the Tigers, and they got a feast in this series. They need two out of three, really the rest of the way, but definitely with this Tigers series, even though it's on the road. But this is more of a challenge for the Reds' pitching staff than for the lineup. I think the lineup's going to get theirs, and we'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. But the Tigers, on the whole, throughout the season, have not been the best at scoring runs. They've not really been that kind of lineup that you worry about. Now, it's interesting. I, I think there's a lot of similarities with where the Tigers are and where the Pirates are. So you could probably watch this series and be forgiven that if you just imagine the other team wearing black and yellow, you're like, ah, the Reds are playing the Pirates. But when it comes to this Tigers team for the season, they're 14th, and this is amongst AL teams. They're 14th in the American League. There's only 15 American League teams, by the way, in runs scored, and they're 14th in OPS. So that tells me that even though the Reds have a little bit of question marks, as of right now, no probable starters are set for either team as I record this Tuesday, or I'm sorry, Monday night heading on into Tuesday. Um, but we'll talk about who's probably going to start those games. But when we look at this, we say, yes, whoever the Reds have going out there on the mound, we need to see some good performance out of them. The Tigers have some interesting young players. They have... Some talent at different spots on the field. You, you talk about the power of Spencer Torkelson. You talk about the overall ability of Riley Green and whoever's going to be out there for the Tigers um, there alongside those guys. It's going to be interesting to see how the Reds pitch around them and, and, and with them and through them and all manner of prepositions there. But when it comes to this Reds pitching staff, this is the series that they've got to be good in. 
And I think that if they struggle, it's going to be hard for me to sit here and say, well, gosh, golly gee, it's just the fatigue and that's, that's a bummer. This is something where the Reds pitching staff needs to do well with. Now, as I mentioned, probable starters have not been announced. I've been looking on my uh, app. I've been looking on the website to see where we're at here. But I believe, unless last-second developments come up, that Tuesday, today, tonight, should be Brandon Williamson. Unless there's something crazy that happens. Uh, All reports are that he is feeling better. Uh, COVID really kind of did a number on him, but he's felt better and he's ready to go and he should be starting this Tuesday night game. Then if you look at uh, the, you kind of extrapolate out the pitching schedules, Andrew Abbott would be on his regular rest. If he pitches on Wednesday, the interesting thing happens to be Thursday. It's not going to be Graham Ashcraft. He's likely out until at least this weekend series, maybe next week, depending on how, the foot is holding up. He had that stress reaction in his foot. So not necessarily a break, but it was something to do more so with the tendons than it was with the bone. Um, so hopefully he's feeling better there. Thursday could be another start for Connor Phillips. Now it's been nine days since his last start. Uh, it also could be the return of Ben Lively, depending on how he is feeling as well. So it's interesting to note these probable starters, but definitely need to see Brandon Williamson come back and hopefully he returns from COVID like Hunter green did. And we see good Brandon Williamson and not, Oh boy, it's been a few days since he pitched. He's got to ramp it back up here. The tigers are not a lineup that you can say, boy, they just, these guys are so tough to pitch against. I mean, they're professional ball players, sure, but Brandon Williamson is a professional pitcher, and he should pitch well against this ball club. In fact, the the Tigers really struggle against breaking pitches, and that's Brandon Williamson's forte. So this should be a good performance for him. Andrew Abbott should be a good performance for him on Wednesday as well. And I know that we've talked about fatigue and we've mentioned that before as being a factor, but this is kind of the point where you throw all of the excuses out the window. I, I really feel like this is something, and it was something that Joey said in his most recent post-game interview. I mean, we throw this term around in sports quite a bit, but in the end of the baseball season, when your team is a game and a half or a game out of a wild card spot and has a shot to make that wild card. Well, then what do you say, Joey? I don't think it worked. We're at Try that. Stage now. Yeah. We're at must win stage now. Must win. No excuses anymore. Red's got to win. Red's got to beat the Tigers that starts with this series. And it, it's something that the, the pitching really needs to hold the Tigers in check. Keep them to the back of their baseball cards for 2023. Don't let them get up. Don't let them feel like they're in this game where the Reds lineup might score a run or two, and then you come back out the next inning and you give up a run or two to the Tigers. Don't let them go, you know, punch for punch here. The pressure is going to be on this Reds pitching staff as they navigate this series. But you know, with the pressure on the pitching staff, the lineup does have an interesting task in front of it, especially because of who the Tigers will be rolling out there. We'll tell you why coming up next. Before we get to that, I want to tell you about one of today's sponsors, and that is Sleeper. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Sleeper, and if you want a chance to win more money as we move toward the playoffs and you have less picks to do it in, you need to head to Sleeper. They're the number one sports app on the App Store right now. Now, and you can win up to 100 times your money with just two or more picks. We're talking about find your favorite players, find your favorite stats, click more or less on those stats, and boom, your picks are in. It's as easy as that. And as we move toward the playoffs, we're going to see quite a bit of action here with Reds players as uh, they go up against these Tigers pitchers or, you know, they face the Mets pitching later on this week. 
do you think they're going to have a good game? Because sleeper's the way to go if you do. And you can click more on the homers, more on the steals, more on the runs, more on the hits. And when you get those picks right, you can win big. I'm talking about Spencer Steer smashing bombs, LA getting steals, hopefully Andrew Abbott getting some strikeouts, hit more or less on them, and hopefully you hit more, and hopefully they hit more, and then you can win big. You can make your entries in 30 seconds or less. It's that easy. Check out Sleeper today. It's the number one app on the App Store. Plus, if you use the promo code Locked On, you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. So win 100 times your money with sleeper picks and get up to $100 match on your first deposit by using the promo code locked on terms and conditions apply. See sleepers terms of use for details currently operational in over 30 States. Check out sleeper today. And thanks as always for making Lockdown Reds your first listen. If you can't be up in Detroit, which actually Steve Offenbaker will be up in Detroit watching the Tigers and the Reds getting it on. Uh, we'll be having him back on the podcast coming up tomorrow. Appreciate you joining me here solo today, just you and me. Uh, but if you can't be at the ballpark like Stephen Offenbaker, then you can catch every pitch of the Reds' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search the word Reds. And uh, for all of our everydayers out there, shout out to our everydayers. You know, you know that I'm optimistic. You know that I love what's going on with this team. You know that I still think they've got a shot to make the playoffs. And we'll continue talking about that on tomorrow's show. So everydayers coming up tomorrow, we will look at that first game with the Tigers, what went right, what went wrong, and what needs to change for the next game. But, you know, as we look at this series, and I said that the, the pitching staff really has a lot of pressure on it. The lineup has a key um, MO, a key goal, objective. That's the word that I was looking for. A key objective moving forward for the final 17 games and really in this Tiger series in particular. I mentioned that the Tigers remind me of the Pirates. The Tigers obviously are out of it. They've been out of it for a while, even though they play in the AL Central, which is worse than the NL Central. And everyone in the uh, West and the East in the American League wishes they were in the AL Central because it's just so much worse of a division. But the Tigers are still out of it. What happens when you play a team that's out of it? You get up on them quick. You put runs on the board, early innings. Make sure that you start getting them to feel that fatigue early on. Now the hard part's going to be the Reds are going to face the best of the pitching that the Tigers have to offer. Now, like the Reds, no probable starters are set, but as, as of this recording here on Monday night, but I think that we're looking at the Reds facing Eduardo Rodriguez and Tarek Skubal. They're going to get both of them. So just get ready for that. And then also they're going to get Reese Olsen, who here recently has been building some uh, some momentum, um, albeit against the Chicago White Sox. We'll get to that in just a second. But uh, looking at the two big guys, Erod, e Eduardo Rodriguez was a guy that I, I thought maybe the Reds might call on during the trade deadline, but seeing what the Tigers got for Michael Lorenzen just makes me think that Eduardo Rodriguez' price was just so much through the roof that it wasn't going to happen. Remember, there was a trade in place to actually send him to Los Angeles to the Dodgers, but Erod invoked his no trade clause. Not necessarily sure why he gave the whole speech of he really likes Detroit and he didn't want to leave Detroit and the Dodgers were on his no trade uh, list. So um, he would have had to waive that in order to go. But I don't know why you would turn that down. You want to stay in Detroit instead of go pitch for the Dodgers, whatever. Maybe, maybe he just doesn't like the Dodgers. I know there's a lot of Reds fans that can attest to that. But that being said, the price for him was probably pretty high. And he's had a nice season. However, there's a little bit of caveat to that because he's had a slightly lower than average batting average on balls in play. It's sitting at 281. Now, it's not astronomically lower than league average, but it's a little bit lower than league average, which means there are more of the the uh, contact that he is allowing are finding gloves than your average pitcher has. And it's a little bit of a luck factor. And in fact, he's not really much of a ground ball guy. 
So when you allow contact and you allow the ball to be put in play and it's in the air, you kind of figure, okay, he's going to give up some homers. You might see some extra base hits. Not so much with Eduardo Rodriguez because he's above average at limiting uh, hard contact, not like elite at it, but he allows just a little bit under league average as far as, you know, average exit velocity goes. And he has seen a lower than normal ratio of homers to fly balls. It's only at 9%. League average is a little bit higher than that, right around 13%. So there's, there's some luck that factors into the statistics. You're going to see an ERA that starts with 3.1, and you're going to be like, oh, my goodness, this guy is really, really good. And he has been pretty solid, but he's not a big strikeout guy. The Reds aren't going to swing and miss a lot at Erod's pitches. It's going to be uh, probably a lot of flyouts. But maybe, maybe. The Reds can play on the luck factor a little bit. Then you're going to see Tariq Skuba. Erod probably going to pitch tonight um, because the way that his rest works out and the schedule and all that stuff might see him on Tuesday. Tariq Skubal probably not till Thursday, but Tariq Skubal I think is the Tigers' best pitcher. And I don't really know that that's that controversial to say. Now, I would like to talk to our buddy Scott Bentley over at Locked on Tigers, see what he thinks about that. But just from an outsider's perspective, looking at what Tarek Skubal has put together this season, dude is good. His ERA is actually slightly higher than Erod's, is at 3.46, but that's actually unlucky according to all of his other metrics. His XFIP, that's a number that I've talked about before, expected fielding, in, fielding independent pitching. So it's, it's FIP. And you take you um, take out like the park factors, and you really focus on like homers and fly balls and all this other stuff. He is so good at that. In fact, his xFIP says he sh- his ERA should be closer to two than it is where you know it's like two point two, I believe, is his xFIP. But he limits hard contact very, very well. He misses bats very, very well. He limits walks pretty well, and he keeps the ball on the ground. In fact, he has one of the league's best ground ball rates at 53%. I mean, runs are going to be at a lucky premium against him. Both of these guys, really, when the Reds get base runners, they cannot waste them. We talked about this team a lot all season long, you know, that they're going to be an aggressive base running team. And I'm not saying that they should stop that, but they should really put a premium on putting the ball in play any way they can. And this is not a team that needs to do sacrifice bunting or anything like that, but they've got a couple of guys in TJ Friedel and Ellie De La Cruz who can lay down a bunt. And I noticed that Ellie has really been working on his bunting here lately. And I think that that is something he wants to add into his arsenal that yes, he can hit the ball a country mile. But he is so fast that all he has to do is put the ball on the ground somewhere on the field, and he's got a shot at making it first. And I think that that is really what the Reds as a whole need to prioritize, especially once they get runners on against these guys. They're going to make sure you've almost got to play in a playoff mentality of we've got to put this ball in play. We've got to move this runner over however we possibly can because the Reds need to score early, and it doesn't matter who's on the mound, but when you're facing the Tigers, when you're facing the Mets coming up here soon, when you're facing the Twins, the Pirates, the Guardians, and the Cardinals, you got to score early. Get runs in the first three innings. Put that pressure on a team that's out of it. Put that pressure. Now, the Twins aren't out of it, but still, you put the pressure on these other teams that are out of their playoff races and aren't playing for anything. They're just trying to play spoiler. But if you put them behind the eight ball early, they're going to not have as much gusto to play spoiler as the game moves along. And that's really where the opportunity lies when they face, uh, when uh, I believe the third pitcher that we'll see from the Tigers is Reese Olsen. He is a rookie who he struggled at times, but he's gained some confidence in his last two starts. His last two starts have both been against the Chicago White Sox, and he has 13 inning, uh, thirteen and two-thirds innings and only allowed two runs in those 13 and two-thirds innings 
albeit against the White Sox, but you cannot overstate the amount of confidence that those kind of performances give a pitcher. Doesn't matter who you're facing. Like we as fans love to ascribe, you know, quality of performances against certain opponents. Players don't care. As long as they're playing well, they're happy. And that's where they get their momentum from. So he's probably going to come into the start. I think he'll probably start Wednesday against the Reds. And he's kind of got a little bit of Luke Weaver-ish luck to him in that the Tigers just seem to win no matter how bad he pitches. I think it was like four starts ago he pitched against the Cubs. He allowed six runs in four innings against the Cubs. And the Tigers won that game. So again, pressure on the Reds pitching staff to pitch well. Don't let these guys... Uh, start playing out over their skis or anything like that. And then, you know, the Tigers re- uh, Tigers uh, bullpen is below average. Reds could possibly get some runs late, but I want them to score early. I want there to be runs on the board, one, two, three, whatever it is, uh, against whoever it is, whether it's Erod, whether it's School, whether it's Reese Olsen, whether, uh, whoever the Tigers pitch. I want to see runs at the beginning third of the ball game because the Reds need to put it on these teams that are out of it, put them on them early. And that's really the task that the Reds have in front of them. So I keep talking about this, these final 17 games. What needs to happen for the Reds to make that wild card spot? I'll tell you what, coming up next. Before we do that, though, I want to tell you about another one of today's sponsors, and that is Game Time. Game Time is the best way to get down to the ballpark, especially for your last-second ticket deals. Not all of us can prepare weeks ahead of time to go to a game and say, I'm buying tickets we, you know, two weeks ahead of time, three weeks ahead of time. Now, the Reds only have, was it six more home games, six more chances to get down to Great American and watch this team play before the playoffs happen. You know, fingers crossed they make the playoffs. And game time is going to be the best way to get down there because they've got the game time guarantee that you're going to get the best price on the secondary market for tickets no matter where you're sitting. And you can check them out today. You can download the app. You can create your account by using the promo code locked on MLB and you'll get $20 off your first purchase. With the final two series of the season uh, coming up with the Twins and the Pirates. You want to be at the ballpark. You want to see what this Reds team has in store. Get down there for the final 3-2-1 Tuesday. Get down there for the final businessman special or business person special. And and get down there for the final Fireworks Friday. Do it using game time. Again, create an account. Redeem the code LOCKDOWNMLB for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price. Guaranteed. Remember, if you can't be at the ballpark, you can catch every pitch of the Reds' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM. On the SXM app, just search the word Reds. You can follow the podcast on all podcasts, podcasting platforms, easy for me to say, including right here on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching. If this is your first time, make sure that you're subscribed. Uh, glad to have you stop it on by. You can also join the community on Discord. We've got great Group of folks talking Reds baseball all day, every day. Link is down in the description to join the Locked on Reds Discord page. All right, 17 games left. As, as I said yesterday, the Reds have two less games to play than the Diamondbacks and the Marlins. And they have, or I'm sorry, the Giants and the Marlins. And they have one less game to play than the Diamondbacks. And the Diamondbacks I just played another game last night. So they've really got to make some hay. And at the top of the show, we talked about, you know, treading water, playing 500 baseball. It's not going to cut it. Not going to cut it the rest of the way. In fact, looking at this and, you know, the Reds are a couple of games behind in the loss column for both the Marlins or both the Giants and the Diamondbacks. I believe that they are now tied in the loss column with the Marlins because I think the Marlins just lost yesterday without looking at the schedule right in front of me. Uh, But... They really need to win two out of three the rest of the way. And yeah, you kind of want to do that all season. But in the final 17 games, if the Reds want to control their destiny, if the Reds want to know that they are going to get that final wild card spot and not have to hope that everybody in front of them plays under 500 baseball, they need to go 11 and six. 
So you need to take two out of three against the Tigers, two out of three against the Mets, two out of three against the Twins, two out of three against the Pirates, one out of two against the Guardians, and two out of three against the Cardinals to finish up the season. That That's really, I mean, there's no two ways about it. And if you end up losing more than one game in a series, then that means you need to sweep somebody. Because the Reds need to win, and this is almost, you know, twice as much as they lose. But they can do that. I mean, we're, we're talking about a month of September, and they got one game in October. But if they win 11 more games here in the month of September... I believe that will give them 15 wins in the month, and that's not asking too much for a team that's already done that once this season. In fact, if you look at the schedule for the year and the way it kind of breaks down, they won 18 games in the month of June. They won 15 in the month of July. And if they win 11 more games the rest of the way, that will give them actually 16 wins in the month of September. It'll offset what was just an abhorrent month of August. There is no way to spend that. As much as I love to spend things in a positive manner, the month of August was bad and they went through a lot. Yes, there were lots of circumstances and we've talked about those circumstances ad nauseum, but that's what's put them in this position. And if they want to get that final wild card spot, well, you got to win 11 out of the next 17 in any way you slice that. And the best way to do it, we've I've said this a bunch today. I said it a bunch yesterday, and I'm going to keep saying it. You got to score early, and when runners get on, the Reds need to do all they can to put the ball in play. Strikeouts don't help anything at all, and we've seen that. There's been a lot of games, and that's really the biggest reason that the Brewers dominated them this year. You cannot strike out with men on base. Not going to work. And, and you've got to just be able to get a number on that scoreboard early so that teams like the Tigers and teams like the Mets that have had a long year to get to the point where they are right now and they're just looking at this and they're like, man, not playing for anything. We're trying to play spoiler, but here we are. We're already down by two runs and it's the third inning. Or we're already down by four runs and it's the fifth. You know, whatever it is. Put a number on that board. And and I keep saying this because it felt like for the month of August, they didn't do that. It felt like for the month of August, the first five innings, they just constantly dealt with dry, you know, barely anything getting going on and they might get runners on, but they won't move and they won't score. And they constantly strike out or unproductive outs and things like that. You can't do that anymore. You got to score early. And I know we love the mantra of the rally Reds. And it's a lot of fun to see the Reds come back and, you know, walk it off or something like that. Now, that's the other part, too. Of these 17 games, only six of them are at home. You have 11 road games, which means 11 chances that the Reds won't have to walk things off. It always feels like the Reds are going to win whenever they're at home and they have a chance to walk it off, even though their road record is better. It's interesting that way how that how that kind of slices out but overall score early and play with the lead don't constantly rely on having to rally because you give these teams the these these uh, spoilers you give them hope that they're going to spoil your playoff chances and I think that's a big reason if you go back to 2021 whenever we talked about how easy the month of September was going to be for the Reds that year and how awful they did that month they just didn't score early score early now pitch well enough to hold that lead and get out of there with a wild card spot and before we get out of here don't forget you can catch every pitch of the reds hometown broadcast with sirius xm on the sxm app just search the word reds but that'll wrap us up for this edition of lockdown reds thanks so much for joining us every day uh and making us your first listen every day Every day is coming up tomorrow on the show. We'll break down that first game against the Tigers. What went right? What went wrong? What needs to change? Coming up next. That's, that's on tomorrow's Locked On Reds. But as for today, make sure that you keep it Locked On Reds every single day.